Okay, seeing the numbers grow. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Look at those participant numbers grow. We are so excited to have you here this morning. So we have so much fun doing this series. So welcome, grab your coffee. Thanks for spending your morning with us. We're gonna get started here in just a minute. Feel free to type in the chat box or the Q&A box where you're tuning in from. Carrie and Ruby would love to see where all their new friends are from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, so you can just type in the chat box. No need to raise your hand, but hello, Sheila. <laughs> Reminds me of school. I like the raise hand feature. Yep, for those of you that are on, like I said, please uh, feel free to let us know what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and bring the Facebook audience in and we'll be ready to go. But there's a lot of people from Canada. Way to go, Ruby. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> there we go. Wisconsin. Clinton Smith is in the house from Inona, Wisconsin. There's Jared from Minnesota. Let us know where they're all coming from, Carrie and Ruby. It's 10 o'clock. Yeah, I see, I see a lot of them from here. Yay. <laughs> what was that voice? <laughs> oh, sorry. That's my laptop. <laughs> telling you what time it is. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to pull up my Facebook live on my phone and we should be ready to go. Hopefully it's broadcasting live. Let me just double check. Wow, there's a lot of from my office. Oh, so nice of them. <laughs> they want to know how you do it. How we do what? How she does what she does. How Ruby does? <laughs> yes. She's amazing. All right. Secrets here, six, six. We're live on Facebook, but I need to double check that before we get started here. Okay. Let's see. Oh, there we are. Okay. <laughs> Technology. All right, I see we already have some viewers on Facebook. Hello. All right. Okay, everyone. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome on this Tuesday, November 24th. For uh, those of us in the US, it is our Thanksgiving week. We have so much to be thankful for. Uh, Canada celebrated their Thanksgiving last month, but we should all be thankful for each other. And as I'm especially thankful to be the host of this series and to be able to feature a lot of our REMAX superstars in the network sharing their best practices. So this week is going to be an incredible topic called keeping in touch with your database. So welcome officially to the REMAX Business Builder Series. My name is Michelle Hoyt. I am Manager of Education and Development here at REMAX Integra. REMAX Integra is an independent region of REMAX. We encompass the Ontario Atlantic region, Midwest, New England, and all of Europe. And we also have a lot of friends joining us from the company-owned regions because we are a REMAX family and we welcome you wherever you're tuning in from. Let us know. I see a lot of great comments. Our Ruby's got a cheerleading section from Brampton. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, let's tell us where you're all tuning in from because we definitely want to hear from you. So as I mentioned, today's topic is keeping in touch with your database. We have two more in this series. So we'll have uh, next week is going to be impactful social messaging and we'll wrap up with reflections and lessons of 2020. So uh, again, welcome. I see the numbers growing. For those of you on Zoom, please feel free to type in the question and the, the Q&A and the chat box. I will keep an eye on those because I know Carrie and Ruby want to hear from you. For those of you on Facebook, I will also keep an eye on those comments. So welcome one and all. So let's go ahead and get started. I know you want to meet your panelists. I can't wait for you to meet these amazing superstars at Remax. So we're going to start with Carrie. Carrie, tell us all about you, your background, your market, your history with Remax, and anything else you want us to know about you. Um, well, hi, everyone. I am in Indiana, uh, Columbus, Indiana, which is about 60 miles south of Indianapolis, which is in the center of the state. Um, we are not really a suburb of a bigger city. We are our own thing. Um, I've been doing real estate for 25 years, so literally started when I was 20. Um, and I've been with Remax for 10 years, I think. I'm not sure exactly, but I've been a, a long time. Um, 
Our, our demographic, our city is about 45,000 people. And then in our county, uh, maybe a total of 75. I'm so busy. I really don't leave the county anymore. There's a lot of agents that, you know, do four or five counties, but I don't uh, just because I kind of want to be an expert at what I do. And you can't possibly, I think it's kind of hard to know about every, everything about every county, but that's just our, our particular population. We are really, really diverse. And I, I looked at this statistic this morning and it was a couple years ago. It was actually in 2019, but we, Columbus, Indiana, Bartholomew County was third in the nation in the United States for work visas. Wow. Wow. Well, you have a lot of big companies there, right? We have a lot of big companies that are very, very diverse. So um, I'm a mom to Noah, he's 17, plays three sports. My husband is an engineer, works for Cummins, uh, which is a big employer in this area. And I'm just a single agent. I don't have an assistant. It's just me, me, myself, and I. So <laughs> that's it. And what's your average sales price there in the Columbus area? For the market itself, for Bartholomew County, it's about 230000 My average is more three fifty five dollars um, for this year, but it varies. Okay, well, thank you. And Carrie is also a recipient of the Hall of Fame Award, so congratulations on that. Well, let's meet our panelists from Canada. We have the amazing Ruby. Ruby, tell us all about yourself, your background, your history with Remax, your market, and anything else you want us to know about you. Hi, guys. Good morning. So this is Ruby from Brampton, Canada. I've been in the business for the last 15 years. With the Remax about seven years, it's totally a change. I'm, I'm so glad that I moved to Remax, one of the best company ever. Um, so I've been doing all this like by referral. Most of my business is all referral and, um, and also being topped one in 100 in agents in Canada and then, you know, Diamond Award winner last four years. And, you know, I have an assistant full-time and assistant and part-time one as well. And all my... As I said, business is word of mouth and um, yeah. That's great. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your market and what's going on there. The market is on fire. <laughs> so we list a house next day, we get five offers, six offers. It's, you know, it's because it's, there's less demand, less supply, more demand. So the properties are going really fast. It's in like two, three days going more than asking. Okay, that sounds good. And then uh, tell us a little bit about your assistant. Oh yeah, she's great. She's been with me like last 12 years. Okay. Very loyal to me, very nice girl. She does all my paperwork. I just give do the deal and give it to her. She takes it over. And it's really good to have an assistant. It's a big change, you know, after you have an assistant, uh, you can um, spend more time looking for clients and um, all that rather than doing your paperwork. And she's virtual, right? Yeah, she's virtual. I'm sure you might get some questions about that from the audience. So I think that might be on a lot of people's goals for the coming year, especially because we just did a goal setting session on uh, maybe getting some help. So we'll see if that, that definitely gets some excitement and some motivated to do so. So that's great. So we're here today to talk about keeping in touch with your database. However, you can't keep in touch with your database if you don't actually have one that's organized. So let's go back to day one for both of you. So we'll start with you, Ruby, on this one. But in your first year in real estate, what steps did you take to actually form a database? Where did you start? What form or platform did you use? Excel, you know, something else. And then also, did anyone help you along the way? Did you have any formal training? So Ruby, we'll start with you on that one. Sure. Um, I honestly used to call all the people that I know. And um, I call like honest 10 to 15 people every day and let them know that I got my real estate license and, and let me know if anybody's selling or buying. And I unfortunately, I didn't have a big help in the beginning. So I had to learn how to, I, I wish I was in Remax that time anyway. So, but it was, it was fun because I worked really hard to be here, right? So I learned a lot. It, it's mainly calling people because not like emails, I'm not adding too much emails in the beginning. It's always on the phone and people appreciate it. And whenever I call them, they say like, you know what, Ruby, we, we definitely will refer you business. And I call them, it's not just call them today. I call them next week as well and remind them, don't forget, you know, if anybody's selling or buying, you should let me know. 
Right. And did you um, just pull those from, from your own contacts, like from your email or a spreadsheet? Yeah, or? It's like the people that I know. Yeah. Um, I met them at, at work or schools and, you know, and people around me, all my relatives. Sure. That's how I started, yeah. Did you, what did you do before real estate? I was everywhere. I was in banking. <laughs> I was in administrations. <laughs> um, I worked in a lawyer's office. Yeah. Well, very well-rounded, but also very well prepared for this business. Well, see, that's a good message for everyone to think about, especially those of you that are new to the business. You've had a previous life. You've had previous careers. So those are the people to start contacting. And that's right there is your database. Carrie, let's talk about when you first got, got started in real estate. How did you form a database? Did you even know what it was? Did you even know what it was worth or what you were supposed to do with it? How did you get started? Well, I started 25 years ago. So when I started in, you know, a lot of the other top agents, I would kind of follow them around like a puppy. And a lot of them were using note cards, which I never used, but that was the system. Mm -hmm. um, and then sort of in the first five to seven years of my business, a top producer came out with a system and, you know, you started to have email. I mean, there wasn't even really like a lot of websites. I mean, I remember developing a website in sort of the first part of my business. So um, I also kind of just told people, but, you know, I think when you start out, there's just a lot of grunt work. You know, a lot of my, I grew up in this area and my parents had a lot of friends and peers, but um, they didn't necessarily, they weren't like, hey, Carrie's in real estate. She's 20. Let's, let's use her, you know? So um, I feel like you just have to sort of earn that. Um, I did do a sphere and the, the word farm was around and I sent postcards mainly. Um, and I remember one of the big things was those recipes. You sent a recipe every month because really, you know, recipes and real estate go together. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we tried. So that's kind of how I got started. And a lot of open houses. Holy smokes, a lot of open houses. Wow, that's great. So let's take a little bit deeper dive into something that you talked about, Ruby. So you mentioned that you started calling people right away to let them know you're in real estate. So that's the key when you're brand new is you have to get people to see you differently, right? Yep. So what were some of the things that you actually said? Did you, and did you only do phone calls or did you send letters? Did you send postcards? And uh, let us know like your, if a couple of the dialogue pieces. Cause I know everyone's wondering, well, what did you say? And also, did you have any, anyone that didn't respond favorably? Uh, we'd love to hear it. Sure. So, um, most of the time phone calls and everybody did support me on the phone calls and they said, you know what, whenever we, we are ready, we will let you know. So that time, and also I did not any single listing. I didn't know what to put it on the flyer and send it over. So I had to ask the other top agents in the office, can I use your property to market it? You know, put it on the, on the flyers and send it over. So I used to do that as well. And I, I remember that I did get a lot of complaints that, you know, this house was so long time ago. Why are you sending us to this? You know, those kind of calls. So, uh, but I, I didn't get scared. I'm like, I'm sorry. And then I did move on, you know. Um, there are a lot of agents. I, I used to door knock as well. Like I didn't do much, but I did in the beginning. Um, I remember a, when I, we're going to call company. You don't even come here anymore. You know, those kind of, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Well, that's certainly, so obviously in this environment, door knocking is not possible, but I know those of you that do it, you do very well at it because no one else is doing it. So yeah. um, even if it's just, you know, leaving a flyer or something, but um, that's fantastic. I mean, you basically, it's a grassroots effort. You have to start at the bottom and at the very beginning. So Carrie, what were some of the first things that you did? Now you mentioned that you shadowed other agents, but for the people that you actually knew, what did you say to them and how did those conversations go? And then did you send any letters or postcards also? Well, so again, when I started, we, we still had MLS books. So this MLS book would come out once a week and it would have all the listings in it. And I mean, like that was the coup. Uh, and so when I started, what I did is I realized that the consumer really didn't have the information that they have today. So a lot of what I sent was postcards about market information, like in the last 18 months, here's what's sold in your neighborhood because that was really uh, privy information at that point. And so that generated, I think, a lot of buzz. And I still think that kind of stuff works because if you're not actively looking for a house, having something come to your 
a mailbox that says, hey, here's what's been going on in your neighborhood in the last year, even if they weren't my sales, I still sort of started to sort of become the, the expert and the one with all the knowledge. For sure. Well, and as you probably both found, it just, it happened gradually over time that you were then seen as the real estate go-to person in the lives of so many that you had already touched. It, it just takes time. I mean, it's a, whenever you're doing any type of marketing effort or self-promotion, there's going to be short-term results, medium-term, long-term. This is a lifetime thing that you're going to need to step. It's about staying in front of your database. And that's what we're talking about today. So thanks to both of you for sharing. So let's go ahead and get into the actual messaging itself. Cause I know that's what everyone is really curious about, you know, the, the different pieces and the content that you're sending, but we can't talk about content and messaging to your database without addressing what's going on in 2020. So how did you change your overall messaging? We'll get into the specifics more in just a minute, but overall and in general, how did you change your messaging to your database this year? So Ruby, we'll start with you. Sure, I always educate my clients, you know, to follow necessary protocols. And, and the most thing that I did, I did call all the, one of my, like all my clients who works in front lines and let them know that, you know, how are they doing? How's their family? So they were like, oh, wow, you, it's so nice of you, Ruby, you called. Even like I, you know, dealt, deal, dealt with them like seven, seven, eight years ago and they're working in front lines. I, I did call them and uh, so I always make sure they ask all the questions like, you know, how are you guys doing? Like, is anybody, you know, sick in the family? And I guide them like, you know what, you can just hang in there before we can start looking for a house because health comes first, right? Mm -hmm. Yep health and family. So uh, what are you doing on social media in general, Ruby? Like um, what type of posts did you, did you notice a change in your own posts with everything going on? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I definitely, I do uh, share all the news about COVID and everything, try to send it to even my clients, most of the clients that are, they're on my, you know, WhatsApp, whatnot. I send them all the news and all that. For sure. And I mean, in all of our markets, real estate was deemed an essential business. So as they say, the show must go on, but obviously you're operating under an, an, a heightened sensitivity environment that you have to be mindful of. So that's great. And it sounds like that you are just educating people is a great approach. So Carrie, what have you noticed? And again, it might not have been an instant change, but gradually, you know, when you took, did you take a step back when you were about to post something or send certain messaging out? based on what's going on, what did that look like for you? Yeah, so I do a lot on Facebook and then Facebook syncs to Instagram, so that happens automatically. Um, but um, I definitely was more muted this year. Like January, February were normal, but then March was kind of like, you know, everything came to a screeching halt. So I also called a lot of my clients and the people that are heavy referrers for me, it was just checked in. So, so that personal connection, I did that. Um, but then I, I tried to stay more muted, I guess. Um, even though I've had the best year out of all my years in a global pandemic, um, I didn't do a lot of like the yay me stuff. I kept it very, um, obviously still some information about houses, but I didn't, I stayed away from all the hot buttons. I, I didn't get in on the Karen stuff. We had the political election. There were no political posts. Um, I think that's, I think that's key every year, but um, right. that's kind of what I did. And I tried to, I tried to post positive things. Like we're in this together. I sent a mailer in late March that I got a Remax graphic that had like the world and it was like, we're in this together, you know, just trying to send a message, like, not like, Hey, I'm a realtor, but yeah. Hey, I care. Right. Or, and also you're sending the message that you're still there and you're still in business and, and you want them to know that in case they need anything. And that's right. good. So let's talk a little bit more about social media. So what's interesting is new agents, uh, for those of you watching that again are thinking, I don't have 25 years of a database to fall back on. The first question would be, how many social media followers and friends do you have? So today, a lot of you, it feels like you're maintaining more than one database. So Ruby, we'll start with you on this one. So you have uh, an incredible amount of social media connections and followers. Do you add those individuals to your CRM database or do you maintain that separately? 
And what are some of the things that you do um, to incorporate those into your regular strategies? Okay, so I really don't add everybody in the data. So let's say if somebody calls me for the price that, that has sold on the street, mm -hmm. if they ask me any questions about, you know, specific house and, and they say, you know what, we are planning to sell in three, four years or two years or one year or six months, then I go more deeper and add them on, on the database. Um, I really don't add much because I don't want to like mix with good clients and they're not like, you know what I mean, serious clients. So, but I do keep them on the side though, right? And I have it on the side in case if any, if they call me back again on those clients, then I go back and add them. For sure. Carrie, how about you? What do you do with your social media connections? And are those, I guess, duplicated in your actual CRM? They probably are, but I've never tried to cross trace. Um, I mean, I think I think that if you have a Facebook business page, I think that you need to consider everyone that likes your page and follows you. I think you need to consider that a CRM in itself. I mean, it's you can still have something else on the side and some of those people may overlap, but people are always watching you on social media. And, you know, when you post a listing and you're homeowner then tags in, then if, if you're open to the public on your business page, everybody sees that. So a whole bunch more people than just your followers. Um, so from that standpoint, I think those are separate. Uh, as far as a database goes, I'm, I don't really use a CRM. I tried a couple, I didn't really like them. I felt like I was just so busy trying to like put the data in that I missed the whole point. So I use Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> which I know no one wants to hear, um, but that's what I use and it works for me. So uh, that's what I do. But I, I have my clients separated into past clients. And then um, I have a, a class of clients called people I know. And that's something I came up with. Um, so it's official people I know, but um, it's, it's, it's like that sphere. Maybe they haven't used me for a transaction, but I know them pretty well. My hairdresser, friends of my parents, people I know from school, et cetera. But then also every, um, every person that buys one of my listings goes into that. And so I keep in touch with them. Even if I didn't sell the house to them, I was maybe the listing agent and a buyer's agent had them. Um, then they, I sort of farm them from that point on. And I get tons of repeat business because a lot of agents don't stay in contact. Once they close, they get their check and they're gone. And I have many people that call back and they're like, you sold me the house. And I'm like, actually, no, but I'll help you relist it. You know, so. <laughs> I love that. That's so true. Well, I, I always like to preface these sessions with the fact that you're going to hear two different approaches. There's no right or wrong answers. It's uh, Carrie said it best. It, whatever works for you. Some of you are thinking, oh, I don't feel so bad because I'm using a spreadsheet too, or whatever it is. Um, so the only ask I would have Carrie is that it's a Google sheet and stored in the cloud. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> please. Uh, but anyway, so that's the key, like making sure it's stored and, but she's got a system that works for her and that's great. I mean, there's so many CRM options out there. Ruby, what are you doing in the way of organizing your database? Do you have a CRM or what's your, yeah, do, I do have a CRM and my assistant definitely, she takes care of it. Okay. And, and which one is it? Hmm? Which CRM is it? Oh, that's a good question. Let me text her. <laughs> See, this is, this is so. That works is, for you. This is reality, everyone. This is what goes on in the world. So she's, she looked at me like, I know you're going to ask that question. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, I know this is for sure. Well, again, this is what you're all dealing with on a regular basis. Um, they say the best, by the way, in case you don't know, CRM stands for client relationship management. Uh, the best CRM out there is the one you'll actually use. So don't go spend money on something that you're not going to use. But, you know, obviously here in the U.S. versus Canada, we have different in Canada. You have Lead Street. We have Bouge here. You have tools already in front of you. So there's lots of training and tutorial videos to help you get started. But the key is make sure it's in the cloud somewhere or backed up somewhere. It is backed up. It is backed Good. Up. That's all I ask. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So speaking of databases, there's a lot of different opinions out there by, you know, top industry coaches and you'll even, you know, broker owners, you can all certainly weigh in on this too and feel free to add to the chat box. But what's the right amount of contacts to maintain? Now, some like Buffini will say, oh, no more than 250 or 300, you know, keep it, keep your 
contacts really, really close, keep it a small circle. Uh, there's some that'll say, you know, obviously the sky's the limit. So let's talk a little bit about that. Do you, and on what each of you think in that regard. So Carrie, how about you? What is your approach to the amount of contacts you keep? And do you always message all of them all at once? Or, you know, I think you said you do certain segmenting. Yeah, so I kind of put people into my own category. So I have my past clients and my referrers, then I have, um, and I have some people that refer me that aren't even a past client, but that just have seen my work and like me. So they go in that, that lump. And then the people I know, and then I have a third column that's called I want you, which is just, I want to break into this market. We have a really nice recreation lake and it's about, you know, so I, I'm, those are in my I want you category. Um, and so I do different things for all of those. But um, I don't, I think the reason that not using like a typical top producer or lion's desk or something like that for me is work is because I don't send mass emails. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't like them when I get them. I don't read them. So I don't waste my time. I don't do a newsletter. Um, my past clients and the referrers that are like in my A group, uh, I, I drop off to their house VIP boxes. It's a little box I put together of kind of my favorite things. Um, and then I drop them off and then if they're not home, I'll text them and I get just amazing responses on that and then I, I send a lot of handwritten notes which is kind of a buffini thing but I I hand address them I have calligraphy markers and I mean it's a bright green or bright orange envelope it's tedious you just sit in front of the tv and just one after another um but I do authentic things like that so that sounds good. And just so everyone knows, um, they're both going to share a couple of examples of some of the things that they're doing here in just a second. But Carrie, how often do you, I guess, uh, clean up your database? Uh, a lot of you take this opportunity during the holidays, if there's any downtime to sort of to do just that. And what does cleaning up your database look like to you, Carrie? Um, I do it every year at the end of the year. And I basically clean it up by adding all the people new um, I keep a list at my desk. And so every time I get a new lead or something like that, or someone calls me, I may not get them on the list immediately, but I have kind of a running, a running tally of them. And then I put them into whatever category I need them to go. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, so, oh, you know, something that's really worked well for me this year is that, you know, because inventory is so low in all the markets is that I've gotten a lot of people calling me and being like, I, I guess maybe they're work, they're looking at Zillow, they're not finding anything. So they reach out to an agent and they're like, hey, help me find this house. And I'm like, well, I, I can't find it either. Uh, but what I've done is I've set up searches in the MLS. And so it'll be like, Carrie and George want Grandview. And that's how I set up the search in the MLS. And I send the email to me, uh, not even to them. Because a lot of times they'll call in and be like, I'm looking for this. Let me know if you find it, yada, yada. Um, and that's what I put probably 2 or $3 million worth of sales together this year by that. Um, and then I save them in my phone. Similarly, Carrie and George want grand deal because, you know. Yeah, no, you know what? That's great. Because if you send them off on their own on Zillow, you know that you could lose them. And uh, I think a, a drip email is okay. There's definitely a point for a drip email on the portal, but you can also lose them. But if you call them back and you're like, hey, this just hit, you'll get, you'll get to go show that house and write that offer. You get to be the hero, so to speak. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, that's great. I love to hear that. So Ruby, how about you when it comes to uh, your database, the amount that you typically keep, and then how, how do you manage it and how often do you clean that up? Or, or is that something you have to, we can talk to your assistant about? She's I laughing. know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, most of my uh, clients on my database is my past clients that I dealt with because we keep, we're, I guess, as, as I told you guys, my business is word of mouth and repeat business referrals from my past clients. So I make sure that I do take care of my past clients very well in a way that every three months I'll get letters, newsletters about the market or how to maintain the homes and what's going in the world, that kind of thing. So and uh, we do clean up. So I mean, past clients, I always keep it. There's another section for sure, future clients. So if I don't hear anything from them, maybe six months, one year, I'm sorry, they're out of my list. <laughs> you gone, she gone. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, yeah, you can certainly, you can choose who you have in there or not. Well, I will tell you most CRMs, there's really no limit on how many you can have in there. There is a question from, Russell, Russellin, sorry, I hope I'm saying your name right. 
Uh, can you please explain what CRM backup, uh, what it is? Well, so essentially, if you're if you are storing documents on your desktop, on your computer, you it is best you back those up in the event of losing your laptop, unfortunately getting stolen, or it crashes, uh, which you know that's a disaster in itself. Then you have to start all over. So it's always best to either um, add it to Google Drive or to use an external hard drive to back up. If you're using a CRM that's cloud-based, however, that's already backed up for you. There's multiple plans and protocol in place for these large CRM companies that have these giant servers that they back this up for you. So even if you're using Gmail, even if you're using uh, Bouge here or Lead Street, they have those mechanisms in place. So if it's a cloud-based program, you don't have to back up. So I hope that helps. All right. <laughs> So let's get let's get into sort of the approach and what some of the things that you're doing. So one of the hot questions, I guess, that we get a lot on this topic is how frequently are you touching your database? So we'll start with you, Carrie. And at this point, feel free to share your screen. How frequently are you contacting your database as well as posting on social media? Um, and then, of course, what do you recommend to your peers is the right balance? And like I said, feel free to go ahead and share um, if you're ready. Yeah, so um, so this year's different, um, but in a normal year, uh, I will contact my past clients at least once every quarter, um, and that's a pretty lengthy list. Like I said, my my best refers that are, are mouthpieces for me, um, I keep track of that, and I give I perk them a little bit more. Certainly, uh, like initially, like when the when the call comes in and someone says so and so told me to call you, I have a house to sell. Immediately, a gift card goes out the door, regardless of whether I'm going to sell anything to that person or close anything. Gift cards out the door, um, and then I keep track of how many referrals they've given me just by a hashtag, you know, just ha and, and so then the gift cards kind of escalate because you if if you've trained up people to do this, you want to reward the behavior when it happens. Um, so, uh, so, so those people I touch more frequently. And then um, at least, at least three times a year, I'll send out sort of mass mailers. And so I touch a lot of people that maybe aren't necessarily in my database, but the neighborhoods that I sell a lot of houses in and that I'm active in, um, I'll send out uh mailers too and I, I i do have some samples of that mailer i'm not sure about sharing my screen but i'll try um you, just the different ones that i use to do that um you can do it <laughs> i don't know i don't know if i can do it while i'm talking so um so okay so i do that and then the then the handwritten notes i have a couple there was a lady that used to make these cards years ago her name was maggie's mailbox and she did these hand artsy cards and when she went out of business, I bought everything she had. So I am still like 10 years later working through those cards, but she has some really, really cute stuff. It's sort of like, hey, I'm a realtor, but not like, hey, I'm a realtor. Mm -hmm. um, and so I send those out. And then I, I post on social media probably twice a week. Sometimes I'll, I have, a, I, on Facebook, I have a personal page and a business page. And sometimes I'll post my listings on my personal page. Um, but not very often because I don't want to be seen as just all about houses all the time. Um, what else? You, uh, you're, you also still utilize direct mail and, uh, and you have success with it, right? I do. I use Vistaprint. Um, I have lists that I've compiled. I typically change all the names to happy homeowner because it's just exhausting to try and keep up with people moving. Um, and a lot of the mail lists use a tax record. And so the names are sometimes jacked up in my opinion. So um, I changed all of that and it just says happy homeowner. And then that way, if they've moved then it, then it still seems flush. I mean, it seems like a good system, um, but I do use mail because I don't think people are using mail. I think a lot of people are using email and newsletters, which is great also, but to get something in your mailbox. I always use an oversized large postcard in color and it costs me about, I don't know, I send out probably, it's somewhere in the four to 5,000 each time I send. And I think it costs me maybe two grand per mail. I mean, it's not cheap, but one listing pays for it. That's amazing. So are you ready to share your screen? <clears throat> oh. <laughs> 
we just learning new things does see 25 years in the business you never stop learning <laughs> i know okay so i just hit screen uh, share screen yep and we'll be good so i see while you're doing that i see a couple of comments coming in uh, we will definitely get to those we see your screen so okay um all right let me show you a couple of things i do here so well these aren't going to be in any particular order i guess that's okay Feel free um, to describe them as you go through so this is just something i've sent out before um i mean my mailers are definitely different so i guess in terms of like not feeling too realtor-ish but definitely not like i cut you know i made this at home with construction paper kind of thing um, but I also take this to open houses. I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to go do an open house, then like kill it while you're there. Um, and so this is kind of something I do. Let's see here. Um, this is a mailer I sent out and I didn't have an actual postcard. So you can see I had it's a photocopy, but it was something I sent out about all my favorite blogs. Can you rotate it? I don't know. Here at the top. <laughs> Almost there. Hang on. Why there we go. There you go. <laughs> um, just this is it's not very good print, and I I can I can scan an email and do a better job. But um, and then you can see where I've marked out and put a date. I posted that on social media just so I didn't duplicate. Just kind of fun things. Um, but some of them obviously really cost related. <laughs> a mailer uh, that I did. Be aware and stay safe. Um, again, and then I have copies of these that I always have out of open houses because sometimes it's just a nosy neighbor coming to check things out. They'll always take these and they keep them. Yeah. Um, there's I'm another one, home maintenance schedule, which seems so obvious to us because we deal with it 24 seven, but a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to think of that. You know? Right. Um, this is my VIP box that I did this fall. You can see there's a mask in it. And oh, um, so nice. I mean, I probably spent 40 bucks, like it's not cheap. And I have a really cute little card that goes with it and talks about my favorite things. And then it says I'm on Oprah because, you know, we're on a budget. Um, but just really like things I love. So it's kind of random and it's meant to be that way so that my clients will call me back and be like, oh my gosh, how do you use the silicone mold? You know, what do you, and so it's all about creating relationship. And, uh, and when you give those out again, those that I, I give those out to my past clients that um, are mouthpieces for me that refer other people to me, and then I give them out to people that I that I know are sort of influencers that if I could get them to be mouthpieces for me, uh, but, but have been past clients that maybe aren't yet referring. You, yes. know, you have to train them up. Yeah, your sound is going in and out, so like uh, maybe when you get oh. close, it goes in and out. Stay right there. Okay, sorry. <laughs> It's okay. Um, and then this is, I just put in a couple of samples of my, I mean, this is kind of all over the map. I realized that. Do you need to stop? No, you're, not? you're good. Okay. Please, please keep going. <laughs> um, well, because it's just all, like, it's, we're off the question at this point, but it, these are some of my, um, my Facebook posts. And so again, like, clearly I'm a realtor. Clearly I sell houses, but um, it's just not, it's, I, I try to set apart. And so I have a lot of people call me that say, I see your posts all the time and whatever I sell my house, I want you to market it because it's amazing, you know? Well, and you also do professional photography on every one of your listings, right? Regardless of price point. I do. I yeah. do. So because that's... it's a standard and you don't want, you know. So this was, um, this was the postcard I sent this fall to my database, everyone. People I know, I want you and my past clients. And again, it's just on the back. I don't have a copy of the back, but on the back it has me and, you know, I'm a realtor, yada, yada, but um, just, it's more muted this year, more about being together. Uh, I do desk photos with my professional photography. I think that's really great, sets it apart. Mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of times, you know, uh, so the Indy 500 is here. And so this one was kind of one that we put up this early this summer and so you know again i just try to to draw people in so this brings up a good point and ruby we're going to have you uh share quite a bit as well but 
instead of just post, when you actually post a listing, I've noticed you're really good at this. You're, you're very descriptive. It's not just, hey, check out my new listing, check out my new listing, which we see so much happening out there. Um, talk about your strategy. When you do post about a listing, what do you actually say and how do you make it stand out? Are you talking to me? Yeah, sorry, Carrie. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking to Ruby. I was waiting. I was excited sorry. to hear. She, she's coming next. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I spend a lot of time on the ad writing. I, um, you know, what you can put in the MLS becomes a sea of acronyms because it's, it's so hard. And so then I custom write my Zillow and my realtor.com text. I try to make it slightly different, but all the information is covered. Um, and then I use that to then write my ads that I put on Facebook and, and, and whatever else. But I have a whole list of words and phrases that I keep by my desk. I didn't put that, I can share that later, but you know, just things to help spur my creativity about it. You know, like the, the vibe at seven o'clock on this patio is this. And so what I really try to do is try to not say, here's the listing, here's the pictures, but here's what it's gonna be like to live here, which is different. Okay. That's great. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing. Ruby, um, we're, we're excited to hear from you now. So how often do you touch your database? What are you sending? What's working? And uh, please share away. Sure. So I connect with them every two months, honestly, once every two months. And so it's like about six times a year with, with my past clients, right? So I send them like pamphlets where, I, as I said, I use the company to send it to them. So it's all about like about the houses, the market value, like around how, what's the going on around the market value around that neighborhood or talk about the homes, how to maintain in winter times and summer times, what to do and all that stuff. So most of the times I got a lot of calls from those people visited the, my client, they say, hey, I went to my aunt's house and we saw your pamphlet. And then they said, you're really good. So we're ready to sell our house. So I got tons of calls like that in the past 15 years, I'm telling you. And uh, because I guess they leave it on their kitchen table, like, you know, and they, I'm sure they, they don't want to throw my pamphlet with my picture on it. <laughs> so they keep it there. And then um, I get a lot of calls uh, for sure once every two months, but this year, because of what's going on in this world, um, it was mainly calls. Um, I did call most of my clients, past clients, and maybe once every four months. I This month is a bit, I, I didn't want to send them all this this year, right? Just to follow them with the calls and how they are doing. And social media, we do, I mean, I don't really post anything. And uh, my assistants and, um, of course, my husband, as I told you guys, is a big help in the marketing so he we do put like two to three posts a week and it's most about my listings or about market values like what's going on in the market if any changes on interest rate with the banks whatnot um so definitely two to three posts a week but let's say if i have a six listing that week then it's going to be more on that week right mm -hmm. and uh, I'm trying to share some screen. I'm I'm sorry. As I told you guys, I don't want to do this. This is not too good. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, just hit share screen and then share your desktop. Um, Ruby, have you taken your existing database and uploaded it into the back end of Facebook to do an actual targeted ad? Um, no, no. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that's obviously another great way to take your sphere and stay in front of them. Because I know we're showing some actual physical mailing pieces, which really stand out these days. Because have you taken a look at your inbox lately? Like Carrie said, I mean, if you're sending a ton only newsletters, then you're missing out on some really important things. Um, and when I get a real estate postcard sent to my home here, it really stands out because there's no one doing it. And of course, it's Remax. <laughs> I'm excited. But yeah, so I think that that's something to really pay attention to. So are you comfortable sharing your screen? Um, yes, I'm trying here. Okay, so share, here. share a screen. We had a practice session yesterday, but it's okay. You've never done this before. So yeah, hit the green folder, share screen, and then you're going to choose your desktop as the option. There you go. Woo! Yay! Yay, Ruby! <laughs> I'm not even sure I know my password for Facebook. Uh -oh. we are, you've got it open on the other tab. So click. Oh, on yeah. Just hit the tab. Yeah. Click the tab. Up at the top. 
Let should already be logged in. Okay, hey, I got it. Because <laughs> as I told you, I, I hardly go to this page. <laughs> I love that. that for you, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so all you have to do, yeah, just click on your own page and there you go. But you know, this is a good example because one of the questions is what do you outsource that you really don't want to do, don't know how to do, so that you've answered some of that here. <laughs> uh, look at that, my first. Uh, post last night, $75,000 more than asking. Wow. You know, that's impactful right there. It's a beautiful home. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, let me click the pictures. Okay. Really good pictures. Yeah. So I do spend honestly uh, money on staging and good pictures. That's very important, right? It's all about online, especially right now. Look at the staging. I have beautiful. a wonderful stager here in Canada. She's one of the best. Wow, it's so good for staging. Yeah, so I love the colors. Oh, thank you. The lighting is really fantastic. Um, do either of you have you ever used Box Brownie to uh, do any photo editing on your listing photos? We featured them on the first panel series that we had on September 22nd. So watch that back on the Remax Integra YouTube channel. Oh, okay. Yep. For and sure. I, I do like visit, you know, usually like few times to the property before it's hit the market. I'm very detailed person. So I go and tell them, look at this corner, look at that, look at this. And they're very helpful as well on most of my clients because they want the top dollars, right? Right. So, so, so yeah. these, this type of messaging for you, whether it's on social media or your database, this is truly what helps you generate even more seller leads, correct, Ruby? Yes. Okay. See, so that's why my clients, past clients, they don't go away. They come back to me. And especially this client, I bought the, bought this house, what, five years ago? Yeah, five years ago, I bought this house for them. And they call me back yeah. to sell this and, uh, and they, you know, they are, they're upgrading themselves. So definitely it's all how you take care of them and, you know. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. So how do you get likes to your business page? What have you done? Because that's a key part of your database. And you promote. Follow. We promote. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let me see how many likes I have. I don't know. Where do I see that? By the way, look at those insights on the left hand side, everyone. Did you see the the number of individuals reach? So what that means is that's incredible. Um, in a month, that means it's had that many impressions, that many people have seen it in their timeline. Whether they clicked on it or not, it's been in front of that. It's just many been coming down. And that's yeah. where a lot of people say, I feel like I see you everywhere. You're like, yes, you do. Yes, right. you do. And you're, it's really Facebook does all the work. You just have to go in and build it and boost it. Um, so Ruby, do you, so just so everyone understands the difference on, on what it's, can you explain a little bit more about what a boosted post means and what it does for your business page? Or do you want me to? <laughs> Her husband does that, right? Does your husband do that? You're so lucky. Exactly. Thank you, Harry. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what is your husband's first name? Mark. Mark. Well, tell him thank you and hello. <laughs> well, he's done a great job. Just so everyone understands, because we do get this question a lot. So what does it mean to post an ad versus boosting a post? So your business page, when Facebook went public, all the small businesses, unfortunately, um, took a hit, so to speak, because your organic reach. So if you have a thousand followers, really only about 2%, maybe 3% of them will see any posts that you make. You have to boost the post to get it in front of more of your followers. So you have to pay. I mean, it's not extravagant amounts of money, $20, 40, 50 at the most. That's the thing about Facebook advertising. It's not super expensive uh, to actually do an ad. You can actually target, you can target a geographic area. You can, like I said, you can upload your own database if you just want to remind people that you're still around and stay in front of them. So there is a difference between. I, I post a lot of my Facebook posts and ads, and uh, I think five days is about the, it's kind of the recommend. If you do it for less than four to five days, it's not recommended, but you only need to do it for, if you're paying for like three or $4 a day, it's just enough to, at least in my market, it's enough to elevate it up. Right, for sure. Yeah, what? I see it here, like 10,000 people reached. Is my little stick? You see it up here? Yeah. That's fantastic. That's awesome. We're, um, I'm really good on, like, I mean, my husband is really good on social media. 
<laughs> but but how big is how big is the area that you're in? Because like my county is only like seventy thousand people. How how big is your? Oh no, I think we have about seven hundred thousand people in Brampton. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Brampton is a suburb of Toronto, basically. <laughs> yeah, we have about seven hundred and thirty something like that. But, but that's okay, you know, Carrie. With Carrie and Ruby being in different size markets, it's really it's about a percentage of your market that you're looking to capture, right? It's regardless of the numbers. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of comments and questions coming in, so I'm just taking a quick peek here. Uh, when Ruby's done, I will address those. So thank you. Keep sure. those coming. So I, I just close it. Yep, you can close it. Unless you have anything else you want to show us. <laughs> uh, you hit the stop screen share. There's your background. There you I go. know, I tried that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's okay. So thank you so much for sharing on that. All right, let's take a look at some of the comments here and then uh, we'll start heading down the home stretch. So, okay, so Dennis is asking about the gift card. So I do wanna put a disclaimer on this as Carrie would also that this may or may not be allowed with your local board. There's always compliance, especially when it comes to incentives, so to speak. But Carrie, how much is the amount of the gift cards that you are giving your clients? Um, sometimes I do, it depends, but sometimes I do like $5 and it's, it's a Starbucks card. And then I have a really cute little coffee cup card that I buy that says, thanks a latte. I mean. That's pretty fun, uh, but usually it's around twenty-five, enough to get enough to get a meal, and I think that stays under RESPA's guidelines. Okay, good, and and it's obviously in Canada, Ruby, right? That's not necessary. That's not allowed, right? No, not at all. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. So please see your broker owner if you're ever going to get the, get an idea to do something along these lines. They can let you know what's allowed or what isn't, or not at all. So. <laughs> Uh, we, we definitely want to make sure you know that to uh, find out what's working at your local level. Mona's asking, and maybe this was already answered, how many listings do you get from your mailers, Carrie? So I think you've already mentioned. You I keep track of that. Um, so I, I, I send a mailer to my home so I know when it goes out because there's a lag. Um, and then uh, I keep track of the calls I get and I ask everyone, you know, how did you get my name or whatever? Um, and so I'll probably get four to five, sometimes upwards of 10 uh, calls from those listing appointments. And I have a pretty good average on my, it, when I go out, I typically get it. So um, it's, it's very profitable. It, the thing about it is I, I literally have to time it. Like I don't want it to come out in June when we take our vacation because I, I'm not gonna be there to answer the calls. I found in, in my market, that January and October are really profitable months for a mailer to go out, don't know why, but those are the best. Right, okay, good to know. Um, so the samples that Carrie had shown us, um, we'll be happy to send some screenshots and examples of that in the follow-up email. So just so you know, it looks like, hi Luana in Indiana, looks like she missed one of the first ones. So we'll get that to you. Uh, let's see, what else do we have that? So Anna is asking Ruby, are you snail mailing? <laughs> are, you, are you sending direct mail six times a year? She just wanted clarification. That's right. Okay, all right. And then, and exactly what are you sending each time? Is it always a postcard? Is it a letter? Is it, do you do anything else? It's a little pamphlets. Like, as I said, it's about like, if it's in spring, how to maintain the home for spring winter, how to prepare for the winter, the market value, it's all mixed information, but yeah. Okay. But holiday seasons, it's how to decorate your house for holidays. Oh. But Ruby, when we were doing our prep yesterday, you said that you send just listed and just sold cards, which I don't. Who do you oh, send really? those to? In the neighborhood where I listed and I sold okay. it. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. try it. Try it. I should well, try it. Yeah. I like that. I love this. They're learning from each other. I love that you both you both pay attention to the fact that, especially um, the example given where, well, I might not have been the listing agent, but I'm treating the, the seller better than their own listing agent is. So you make that impression with them. So you're both really doing that. So even if you sold a home in that neighborhood and it wasn't your listing, you're doing a great job targeting that. So um, Elke asks a question to Ruby about how do you obtain approval from the buyer and seller to state that that particular home 
sold for 75k over asking. Now I noticed you didn't put the actual address of the property. Is that correct? No, it's there. It is there. Okay, I wasn't sure. So if you could talk through that a little bit, um, and it may be different in Canada versus U.S. So um, we'll have you. I know you're going to speak specifically about Canada. So the people that you know, we had multiple offers. It's not just one offer, right? So I did make sure I did, we did all the background checks before they put an offer. We didn't give it to somebody. They're not financially strong. So the people that they're buying it, they're pretty much putting like 80% down payment to the house. So it's more than like a 500,000 down, like more than an 80%. So, so they're solid buyers and they work for government. So um, in this COVID times, I'm sure they're not gonna lose their job. It, it, it is a little sad. We have to check everything now. So they're very solid buyers. And uh, my client is actually a lawyer as well. So he did more homework than me who was buying the house. <laughs> Not surprising there. So, well, thank you for addressing that. That's a really good question. I mean, obviously you have to be careful what you're posting, it's public out there, but always good to make sure you know the rules. Um, I think it's a fantastic marketing strategy it certainly creates urgency and uh, like you said for those that are contacting you five years later to sell they're probably paying attention to the market and they're knowing that they could be in a position very similar to that and i'm sorry i just wanted to add so our schedule b it does covers about the marketing we do have a clause buyer and seller signs off as well Okay, sounds good. And again, just please see your broker owner and your management and leadership in your own brokerage for more guidance on these type of things. Um, so, okay, so AQ is asking Ruby, how much do you spend on your Facebook ads? Um, do you have any idea how long it runs or uh, what type of results? So we saw some results already that she had shown us on the screen. And then as far as what you spend, do you have a general idea is it, and how long do they run? Are they for a weekend? or um, anything. Ruby, if you could share with us. Sure, just one second. Okay. <laughs> this is like a game show, phone a friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. All right, we'll come back to you. That's, I'll go to the next question. Thank you, Ruby. Um, all right, so another question about how much you're spending on boosting a oh. post. Just so everyone knows, we did mention that it generally, you could spend as little as $10 to do a Facebook ad and it may run just for a few days and certain, like a 10 mile radius if you wanna advertise an open house. I mean, definitely the, the Facebook Help Center does talk a lot about your different options and uh, lots of things there. Ruby, did you have something? Yeah, so I spent about $50 per post for five days. Okay. Five days is a magic number in Facebook land. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's good exactly. to know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay. So looks like you got a lot of good compliments on that particular post. Well done. And let's see. So the staging, this is a good question by Lisa. Ruby, your staging is fantastic. Do you pay for the staging or does your client pay for it? It's, uh, it's all depends on the commission, of course, right? And uh, sometimes they may want to give you a more commission, say, Ruby, you take care of everything. You know what I mean? They do add the cost on top of the commissions. It all depends. Right. And sometimes they say, you know what, we'll give you this and we'll take care of the staging. Yes. Um, so that sounds good. So Anna is asking a little deeper into that. What does a stager usually charge? Oh, it all depends, honestly. So I would say... Anywhere from three grand to five grand. Yeah. For the bigger homes. So what was the square footage? From, the sorry. square footage of the home that you showed us the add on? That was about twenty one hundred. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I, I use I use staging too, but we don't have in our market, we don't have the people that come in with the trucks and do the furniture. So we kind of stage with art and accessories, but I found that it helps a lot. And just having someone else, you know, I say to the client, I'm going to, I'm going to take some pictures and I'm going to send it to my stager, especially now since it's COVID and she's going to tell me what needs to go, right? Like I know what needs to go, but it's better when it comes from someone else. Definitely. Thank you both. Um, wow. I'm seeing even more questions on the chat. I thought, I thought I'd cleaned out the Q and a box, but <laughs> There's more. <laughs> All right. So thanks everyone. This is awesome. Someone wants to know, what do you do for your past clients for the Christmas holidays? That's a great 
thing coming up. Uh, we've got Thanksgiving again here in the U.S., but uh, Ruby, we'll start with you on that one. What do you do for the holidays? Sure, I honestly usually send them Christmas greeting cards and Christmas cards, whatnot, and to my database and my past clients. That's that's what I do. Nothing much. Okay. And then for your Facebook connections who you don't have a mailing address for, uh, do you do anything particular there in the way of messaging or direct messaging? There's a post. We do post on the Facebook, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. I heard something on the news that the, a record number of people across the world are going to send actually mail Christmas cards this year <laughs> versus not so much in the past. Um, so yeah, we've all gotten away from that. Carrie, how about you? What do you do for the holidays? Um, since we're, we're so diverse, I don't send Christmas cards anymore because not everyone celebrates Christmas and it's impossible to know is a Hanukkah or nothing. And so yeah. I do Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is safe. Mm -hmm. um, and so I send a really nice mailer, uh, actually just greeting cards and stuff like that. Thanksgiving, I follow it up with that postcard I showed you. Um, that goes out to my massive 5,000 people database. And then I'll follow it up with something that matches on Facebook and Insta. Sounds good. I like it. Great. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ruby, what company do you use for your newsletters? Eileen's asking. Morrison Marketing. <laughs> Morrison Marketing. What are you on the background? I see you looking. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, so that's, this is a lesson in itself. If you don't have time, outsource. <laughs> Trust me, that's what I just deal with my clients. Rest of them, I don't know what, oops. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, but it's all good happening. No, that's great. Sounds good. Uh, let's see. Uh, staging company's already been answered. Uh, let's see. Ruby, uh, okay, some of the same questions are repeated. Uh, Dennis said you guys rock, so good job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you, Dennis. Uh, let's see, couple comments about your Schedule Bs, which uh, Carrie and I won't be able to speak to. The, those are just general comments. All right, last call for questions. We're gonna wrap it up. Let's see if uh, anything else is on here that we need. Uh, Katie's asking one more question about the staging. She said, if I do the staging myself, how do you approach a seller about your advice on what to do? So that's a good question. Do either of you have a checklist or do you, what do you do? So we'll start with you, Ruby, on that one. Um, I'm honestly like, I'm not like, I'm only good at what I do. So I wouldn't put myself into staging. Like, let's say if it doesn't come nice, that you get the old blame, right? So I wouldn't like honestly get into um, staging. Like I would, I would rather pay somebody who's professionals mm -hmm. and um, to do it. And she comes in, it, like my stager consultation is included. She comes like week or two weeks before to my client and give all the consultation from A to Z, what to do, right? So I rather do that. So I really don't know how to answer that question. No, actually you did. And that's a great advice. Carrie, how about you? If someone says, well, I want to do it myself, what do I do? Well, I mean, I, I, have, a, I have a list of things that I leave for them. It's a, a top 10 list thing of things to do and not do, like clean, clean the refrigerator, nothing on the refrigerator, put the dog bowls away, no candles, mm -hmm. um, which is, those are kind of basic things that if you're not staging, um, I find that in a lot of people's houses, their art in general is just undersized. Um, so, so a lot of a lot of times, if you can just clear off the mantle and put something on there that's um, more generic, that helps. But it's really hard to do it yourself. And and I I have someone that I pay on the side that um, does it for me because it's really hard to go into to your client's house you've just built this relationship with and be like your stuff stinks. <laughs> You know, it's hard. So I think you need it, even if it's like a girlfriend that you, uh, that you think is a good decorator that would be willing to do it, depending on your market. I mean, obviously Ruby's market is huge and all of that's available, but it's not available in Columbus, Indiana, so. Right, and again, there's no right or wrong answers here. It's gotta be what works in your market. So a really good approach though, Ruby, by just admitting, hey, not my area of expertise, yeah. but taking yourself out of the responsibility um, and 
uh, have, bringing a professional in. So that's, you know, we were going to talk a little bit about what you outsource. I think that's great. So um, a lot of questions about the staging, but Ruby, do you pay the stager right away or at closing? All right away. Okay, yeah, otherwise you wouldn't get that person yeah. there, right? <laughs> so, okay, good to know. So thanks everyone for your questions. Uh, let's, one last bit of advice to the audience here. What would you say to those of your peers that might still feel a little bit stuck on what to do to get started messaging their database or what to say? Um, so Ruby, what advice would you give them? So, you know, I motivate myself. It's me. It's all in us, right? So like, so definitely get there, guys. If I can do, you can do too, honestly. So try to talk to people like you should get out and talk. If you don't talk, you won't get in in business, right? So mm -hmm. talk to people. Add, try to add like, if let's say you don't have any database, you want to start something. So start talking to people and add them. Just see like, you know, just add them like five, six a day. I would do that if I don't, I'm starting it and I don't have anybody like that time. I didn't know when I started about database, but now I know. So definitely talk to the people and just get their information and say, let's say, oh, my friend is selling. Oh, give me the address. Like, you know, add them and send them a card or send them like, you know, um, um, get their phone numbers and call them. You, sh you should do that. Like, you know, you. Definitely. Thank you. Great advice. Carrie, how about you? What advice would you give to those that just don't know how to get started doing this? Um, if you have a personal Facebook page and you don't have a business page yet, I would definitely start a business page. Um, even if you have five likes, start a business page. Uh, back when we could do open houses, that was a great way. I mean, you, there's a 50-50 chance that someone that comes in the door is actually looking to buy real estate. So that's a great way to start sort of getting the business going. Um, I think another thing that I did when I first started out was I went to Rotary. I was in BNI. I was, you know, I went to Chamber of Commerce meetings. I spent a lot of time going out, um, dressed appropriately, uh, wearing my name tag, which I don't even know where my name tag is anymore. But, um, but you know, you made it a point to look the part and be the part. And it's not to say that you have to go to the grocery in a suit but there's definitely some value. No, I really appreciate it so much. Um, so thank you so much, everyone, for your comments, for your questions. Um, hi, Michelle on Facebook. Michelle Goodridge is watching, making some very nice comments about you both. And I believe that's it. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this home. Um, again, I have so much to be thankful this week. I think a lot of you do as well. So I'm thankful for all of our friends across Ontario Atlantic region in the US and everywhere from Remax that you're watching, uh, no matter where you're from. So thank you. I'm so appreciative of all of you and what you do. And some of you are having the best years you've ever had during these unusual situations that we're all dealing with right now. So congratulations. Thank you so much to Ruby and Carrie. You are both amazing. We really appreciate it. Any last comments to anyone? So I want to say thank you. Um, thank you so much, Michelle. Honestly, you know how I was shy and nervous, but thank you. Honestly. You did great, Ruby. You did great. Oh, thank you. You guys are great. Thank you, Remax. All right. Thank you, everyone. And uh, U.S. folks, happy Thanksgiving and Canada. Happy holidays. Everyone uh, signing off until next week. We'll see you back. Same place, same time. Impactful social messaging. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank Thanks. You. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy holidays. Bye.